So around this time last year, I bought a flat. I was looking for something to move out from my family house and not gonna lie, most of the places were either completely out of my range or just straight up ugly. Okay, I was looking for something pretty specific. I wanted an old place that wasn't renovated cause then I could do it my own way. Like what's the point of buying a place all fresh and new when you can't even get the bathroom done the way you want to because it's already been done. And now you're stuck with a bathroom you don't like for years because it's new and you're not gonna pick it apart. Not to mention it's probably cheaper to do it on your own or at least I thought so back then. <laughs> so I was looking for a place that was old, in need of renovation and in a nice location. Turns out it's not simple to find a place like that, at least here in Poland. Because while places in need of renovation are cheaper, people owning those places are also not stupid. And they know that, so they renovate them themselves to then put it up for sale for more money. <laughs> Which is why when I saw pictures of this flat, I was like, this is it. <laughs> not only is it old and in need of renovation, but it is also located nicely and has the most gorgeous folding doors. <laughs> not gonna lie, the doors were a huge part of decision making because damn, those are some fine doors. So I fought my telephone phobia and I gave them a call and I went in for a viewing and I was both excited and disappointed. <laughs> I was excited because I thought, you know, maybe it's much smaller than it is in the pictures. But that wasn't the case. And generally speaking, I love the vibes and the layout and the location. Basically, the flat was constructed in a way that allows you to sort of like walk through room to room and you could just go in circles forever. But I was worried because the condition wasn't perfect and that's a huge understatement. First of all, what I saw in the pictures and what I thought is beautiful wooden flooring was actually plastic covering. Second of all, there was no bathroom? <laughs> So I just came back from my holiday in France and I was like, you know what, I'm kind of missing the French vibe. So I wanted to play some French TV in the background when I'm working and the French TV was like, you're not French, so you can't watch. So I turned NordVPN on and I was like, yes, I am French, thank you very much. Using NordVPN can help you reach the content that is unavailable in your location, but that's not all. It can also protect you from malware, either online or it can inspect the files that you download. It can protect you from intrusive ads, web trackers, and basically everything that's wrong with the internet. NordVPN can also be helpful if you're trying to avoid being spied on. I don't judge. It is also the fastest VPN out there, so it won't slow you down. What I like about NordVPN is that it's it's literally, it's one click and it's on. You just open a map, click on the location, and voila, a welcome to France or Singapore. NordVPN has over 5,500 servers in 60 countries, so that's a lot. And also you can use it on six devices at once. I won't go into technical details because honestly, I don't understand it and neither will you, most of you at least, but it works. So if you, like me, want to access stuff regardless of your location or just want some additional protection while surfing the web, uh, NordVPN is the one for you. And today I got a treat for you. <laughs> Because if you follow the link at nordvpn.com slash carolina, there is an exclusive NordVPN deal waiting for you, which is that you get four months for free on a two-year plan. So follow the link and get it. Bonsoir. Like there was a tiny toilet room, but no bathroom. And there was a bathtub in the kitchen instead. Now mind you, in a lot of Polish flats, especially those built a long time ago and owned by old people, you can find various quirks like that because at the time the flats were built, you would often use co-shared bathrooms or just bathe in a basin. And then it was too pricey to change that because poverty and Polish people's republic, so... Like my grandpa still doesn't have a bathroom sink because he's like, bathtub works perfectly fine for that. And third of all, the windows were falling apart and I'm not even exaggerating. That was not good because that's a lot of money. And at first I thought, you know, maybe they could be renovated. But when you grab a window frame and some bits just chip off, you know, you're screwed. So I did the viewing and I was torn because I loved it and I could already see what I would do with it with like different rooms. But at the same time, it needed a lot of work. Let's just say the walls were not painted since the 1980s and it is very likely 
likely that other features of the flat are even older. If not 1930s, which is when the building was built. But eventually I thought, you know what? It's not like I need to move out this very second. There is time I can slowly get around fixing everything and just get it done one step at a time. So I did it. I bought it <laughs> and I met up with the owners who told me a lot of fascinating stories about the flat and its history and why everything was the way it was there. Because a lot of the times you just walk in some room and you're like, why is it done this way? So they explained a lot of these quirks to me, which makes so much sense when you know the history of the flat. For example, there is a phone line installed in the smallest of the rooms that their grandma would use to summon their grandpa from the basement when he was working. <laughs> there was a sewing machine on one of the windows that was used by a family relative when they were working for the biggest fashion house in the pre-war Poland. So there was also a built-in cupboard in one of the rooms, which is honestly not a feature that you see often in Polish flats. And that is because there used to be a tiled stove there that was later replaced with central heating. There was a pantry in the kitchen. This is also not super common in Polish flats, even old flats. So I was beyond excited. Let's just say it's an incredible property that witnessed lots of generations growing up there. Knowing that only solidified my decision to keep as many of the old features in the flat as possible. Which as it turned out wasn't too easy. But let's start with my initial plans for the flat. First couple of weeks I just visited the flat every now and then and just sort of sat there and soaked the atmosphere in. Well not literally because it sure smelled funny in there. <laughs> but I realized that it's completely different to like look at the photos and plan what I'm gonna do and then actually be there and see how many things that I came up with cannot work. <laughs> of where. Considering that I will have the whole flat to myself, which is already pretty luxurious, I don't need a huge bedroom. I'm okay with a small bedroom. So I would like it in the smallest room. Now the problem was that the smallest room was very small indeed, like it was bed width small. <laughs> Luckily for me the wall that was separating the bedroom, the potential bedroom from the other room was not a load bearing wall so I could move it. And I decided to do just that, move it a little bit and make the bedroom a little bit bigger, but only a little so I don't lose too much space in the other room. Because in the other room I really want a library. <laughs> On one wall that is, like just a huge book 
related room because I could also use that space for working and editing and sewing. Then the biggest room would be the living room. I think anyone who lived with their family for a long time can definitely relate to wanting to have that sort of space that you could just sort of entertain people. <laughs> now my main issue was the bathroom situation because I sort of liked the kitchen where it was and unluckily for me the tiny toilet room had to stay where it is because of construction issues. So right now my choice was do I sacrifice the biggest room in the flat and make sort of a kitchen island there or do I keep the kitchen where it is and sort of slice it almost in half to have a bathroom there. Now I'm not gonna lie, both options were not ideal. I really didn't want to make my living room into a cooking slash eating space because that would just be a a big kitchen instead. But I also didn't really like the idea of walking through the kitchen to get to the bathroom. There was also the pantry problem. <laughs> so basically I love the pantry. Obviously how cool would it be to have your own pantry? Like I don't even cook that much but that would just be so cool. And I just hated the idea of getting rid of it. But if I was to use some of the kitchen space for a bathroom and just leave the pantry right where it was, that would be a really small bathroom. <laughs> I fought for the pantry and I said you know what I don't really need a big bathroom, like a shower will do. I tried several different configurations and even asked an architect friend to sort of help me figure this one out. But well, at some point you realize that whenever you shower your butt will be in the sink and it's just not ideal. Also not gonna lie, that was actually a big part of my decision making was I have lots of vintage clothes that I have to wash in a bathtub. So how the hell am I gonna wash all my clothes if I don't have a bathtub? So after much deliberation, um, the pantry had to go, which I was really sad about. But I managed to sort of save it, which I'll talk about later. I also realized sort of halfway through that since toilet is actually a separate room in the hallway, it's not that gross to have a bathroom in the kitchen because it's not like you're farting on your food. So now I'm not gonna lie, the kitchen and the bathroom layout was the hardest part of designing and planning this flat because there is just not enough space and the space I have is just so oddly shaped it's really difficult to come up with something good. First off I wanted the bathroom door to be on the left side of a newly built wall in the kitchen because it was just sort of like the fastest route like you didn't have to go across the kitchen to go to the bathroom but it was sort of like like a continuation of the hallway but then um there was the cursed door. Basically the kitchen had two entrances. One was from the living room and this one would be the normal size which was used to carry out the dishes back in the day and then there was a narrow door from the hallway which was probably used to carry in groceries and stuff without interrupting whatever was going on in the living room and honestly I don't really understand how it even worked because when I asked the renovation guys to have a look at it he had to come in sideways <laughs> like it was literally so narrow half of it was hidden in a wall and the other side was chimney wall so that couldn't be moved the reason I wanted to use this door as an entrance to the kitchen was because the wider ones were built in a way that took a lot of the living room space. And in my stupid brain I went, hey of course I want more living room space, without really thinking how tiny the kitchen will be. So we debated for a while about getting rid of the door frame entirely and trying to scrape some of the cast of the chimney wall off to make it like two centimeters wider so it's not so narrow. But eventually we just said screw it. You know, let's just cover these doors up and just use the wide doors instead. It was definitely a good decision in terms of using what we already have, but I have to say it felt very natural to be like walking into the kitchen straight from the hallway, rather than having to go all the way around through the living room doors. But I'm getting used to it and it's not that far, so it's fine. Then there was a matter of the heating pipe. <laughs> so I'm just gonna record this using my kitty as a pillow. Anyway, I called the renovation guy today and he was like, I cannot do anything until you take care of the pipe situation. And basically, for some reason, whoever did the heating pipes in the flat decided to put a pipe in front 
of the toilet door. So basically you cannot fully open the toilet door because there is a pipe. Um, and he was like, you need to contact the building administrator to like figure out how the hell do you fix that? Because like he can't do it because the whole building is like central heating, like everyone is connected. So I wrote to the whoever takes care of the building and I was like, hi, so there is this pipe and I attached the picture and I think that was a good idea because she like the lady called me back immediately and she was like so I saw the photo I don't know why they did it that way <laughs> every single person that has seen the pipe so far is like what the f is going on like why would they do that like they just kept some really unnecessary distance between the pipe and the wall and the lady was really nice and she was like i'm not sure if we can fix it but i'm gonna do my best to like try and contact whoever is responsible for that she also said it was done like 20 years ago so like that's sort of, like super old business but i have a uh, some hope but like everyone is like what is wrong with whoever put the pipe in so long story short nobody wanted to move the damn pipe so i thought you know what fine let's keep it then maybe we just get some narrow doors i don't know and then my renovation manager said hey so i was thinking remember the pantry door so yeah, we used uh, my pantry doors for the toilet room and I regret nothing because now I could use the original toilet doors for the bathroom, which in turn meant I basically have a full set of matching original 1930s doors and I don't have to get new ugly ones. So that's great. Now that that was sorted, the kitchen bathroom dilemma remained. I have to say like every time I thought that's more or less settled, something came up or like some complication occurred that <laughs> made my plan impossible. Oh, you thought you can put your dishwasher here? Wrong! There is no water on this side of the room. How about an oven then? Well, the wall is too thin and there is no way to put any electricity supply in it. So no, you wanted to have an L-shaped kitchen? Well, guess what? There is a heater right under the window that you will cover. You wanted to hang covers on the wall? Jokes on you, there is two heating pipes in the corner. You wanted your dishwasher in the other corner? Wow, excellent idea. How will you open it though if you have cupboards around it? <laughs> like literally every idea I came up with, I was like, <gasps> No. So at some point I was just convinced no kitchen is ever possible in that damn room. Kitchens have been done in much smaller spaces, but this one just seemed to be no kitchen space at all. I still haven't actually put together my IKEA kitchen that was just delivered days ago, so I don't want to jinx it because honestly at this point anything could happen. For my living room I more or less wanted the original furniture layout of the room, as in a sofa next to the thin wall and a wooden table on the other side of the room. And there weren't really any constructional changes but one. <laughs> so basically because I'm moving the wall between the smaller rooms, that means the precious folding doors will not be that folding anymore. They were designed to sort of fold around the doorway and end up on the wall, but because that wall would now be much narrower than the door, they would just be awkwardly half folded. I tried it, it didn't work. <laughs> because the doors are obviously my top priority when it comes to designing and planning this flat, I came up with a crazy plan to basically take them out, flip them, and make them fold the other way instead, so they would open to the living room. I told the renovation manager that was visiting the flat about this idea and he was like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I hired another renovation manager and he did it and it worked. <laughs> but these were all honestly minor tweaks compared to what still had to be done. The heaters were leaking, the floors didn't exist, the windows were falling apart, the front door was barely opening. So I had to order all of these and then patiently wait and wait and wait because post-pandemic shortages are no joke.
welcome to my basement haul. First up, we have a gazillion of keys. Um, they're pretty cool though. So I decided to take them because you never know uh, when you're gonna need some old keys. These are newer, but these are literally like so old and weird shapes. Next up, we have uh, these bad boys. I just, I'm sorry, I just had to. Then we have this beautiful, what I'm assuming is Bakelite switch. I don't know if I'm gonna use it because I don't know what's inside this box, <laughs> but it's pretty cute. Next up I have this lock which just look cool. So uh, what is my hand doing? Wow, very graceful. It looks rotten. Anyway, here is the lock. Um, it's just cute. And then I have what I'm assuming is like pieces of the curtain rails like the original ones because there are some of these are still here but some of these pieces are missing such as the ends of the holders so so i'm assuming these are the missing pieces and then i also took this tin box because it's just cute i know it's like super messed up but it's cute so this is my basement haul see you next time generally speaking not gonna lie this renovation took forever um, like I expected it to take a while, but not this while. <laughs> Let's just say back when I started, I thought I'm maybe gonna move in by like late spring. Um, well, it's August now and well. <laughs> the good news is they finally finished floors last month and I'm finally getting to sort of the fun part, but I'll talk about it in another episode of renovating my flat. <laughs> Love that catchy title, wow. Um, Bye.